Let's say a bit more about lab safety. When you're in a lab, uh, there are two aspects. There is personal safety equipment, that's the stuff that you wear and carry with you, and lab safety equipment which stays in the laboratory. In order for a chemical to do you physical harm, it has to somehow enter your body. And personal safety equipment is all about blocking those routes of entry into your body. There are four possible routes of entry, ways that a hazardous substance can get into your body and thus do you harm. They are inhalation, breathing it in through your nose, ingestion, swallowing it, injection, entering through your skin through a needle or more likely a broken glass cut, or by skin or eye contact. The idea is to block all of those routes of entry. We'll go from the top down and dress a chemist properly for a lab. Now, let's start at the top. Your head, in an environment where falling objects are a real risk, wear a hard hat. In the ChemEng lab, Wahlberg 125, there's a mezzanine level, so people working above you, and you'll need to wear a hard hat. However, in the lab, Blaschmiller labs, that's not the case, so you don't actually need a hard hat here. Next, ears. You shouldn't be exposed to more than 90 decibels for more than 15 minutes. And if so, you will need earplug protection. We will provide earplugs when you visit the steam plant in your third year. But again, the Lashmiller labs are pretty quiet. However, you do need to be able to hear those around you so you don't wear iPod earphones like that. Next come your eyes. This is the most important safety equipment that you can wear. Your eyes are soft, they are squishy, they come true to a customer, and they cannot be replaced. So always, always wear eye protection in the lab uh, to block that particular route of entry. There are many different kinds of eye protection. You really need something in front of your eyes all the time. You can either have safety glasses, which are curved to fit the shape of your brow, and also have side shields to protect you against splashes from the side. There are visors, which also will fit over your glasses, and there are goggles. These form a good positive seal, and in fact, provide you with a slightly better protection than the glasses will. Sometimes these tend to steam up, particularly if you have a rather warm personality. If that is the case for you, then we do have some face masks that we will lend you during the lab. Eventually, you get used to your voice echoing back to you, but this will protect your entire face against echoes and spills. However, don't wear the face mask like this, because, again, this is providing zero protection to me. You can get safe... These are prescription glasses with side shields. These are actually my personal prescription. One thing that you should not wear in the laboratory is contact lenses. That's big for two reasons. First of all, uh, if there is an acute problem, the lens inside your eye is a foreign object. And if, against all probability, you get chemicals spilled in your eye, then the contact lens will cause it to be much more difficult to wash that chemical out of your eye. And so it makes the cleanup much harder. The other reason is every day, even if there hasn't been a spill, a contact lens will absorb organic chemicals from the atmosphere. And what will happen is that the lens, which is right up against your cornea, is absorbing chemicals and will be intensely irritating, especially if you've got organic fumes around you. Sometimes, in the worst situations, the contact becomes so sticky that it needs to be physically removed by a doctor because it's glued itself to your cornea. So if you are in a laboratory, please do not wear your contact lenses. You need to be wearing your own prescription spectacles if you do need eye correction. Here we have an example of why you should always wear eye protection. This is a pair of goggles which was in use by a student in this lab, and he was made doing an organic synthesis, and the preparation sprayed in his face. This is 
not made up. This is a genuine pair of glasses. And you'll notice there's splash all over the eyepiece of the goggles. That chemical would have been in his eyes if he had not been wearing them. It never happens when you're expecting it. This is why you always, always wear eye protection. If you're in a particularly dusty area, you may want to have a face mask like this, which is commonly used and available at places like Canadian Tire. However, these protect from particulate waste only. They do absolutely nothing against compounds in the vapor phase, they, which will pass straight through the mask. So if you are dealing with vapor phase nasty chemicals, your best defense is, in fact, to do it inside the fume hood rather than pretend you're going to stop it with one of these because it won't. Next, your mouth. This is a great way to get chemicals into your body. We use it that way every time we eat a meal. Unlike your nose and your eyes, you can close your mouth. So the rule is no eating, no drinking, no chewing gum, and no chewing pencils in the lab. You don't use your mouth to suck liquid into a pipette. Now your shoulders. If you've got hair long enough to hit your shoulders, it should be tied back out of the way so that it doesn't swing forward into machinery or equipment. You can either wear a ball cap or you can tie it back. The rule is, if it's long enough to go into a ponytail, you should keep it in a ponytail. Next, your torso. Wear either a lab coat or coveralls. When you put the lab coat on, make sure that you actually put it on. I have here an experienced lab coat. It's been through the wars. Now, if you look at it, both front and back, you'll notice that the stains are heaviest uh, where the lab coat is doing its job of protecting you from chemical spills down the front and at the end of the sleeves. I frequently see people wearing a lab coat as I'm wearing this one now. And you'll notice that I am not protected in precisely those most vulnerable areas, down the front and at the end of my sleeves. So if you are actually wearing a lab coat, make sure that you wear it which means sleeves all the way to your cuffs and do the buttons up. This is the best way to inhibit chemical spills and minimize the exposure that you have to them. If you spill a chemical, gravity being what it is, it will most likely splash on you from the waist or countertop height and down. So your legs should always be covered either with pants or a skirt um, all the way to, or your coveralls all the way to the ankles. Your shoes should be closed-toed, not sandals, no Crocs, no open-toed shoes. While we're at it, in winter, people frequently wear their pant legs tucked into their boots, um, but don't leave them that way in the lab. Chemicals dropped from above can go straight to your foot, funneled by the leg of the boot. Now, at the end of your sleeves are your hands, so you should protect those with gloves if you're handling chemicals. Depending on the particular chemical hazard you have, you may want to choose a different kind of glove. Latex gloves, which are available very easily and are, in fact, very comfortable and stretch, are very, com are very useful if you are dealing with dilute aqueous solutions only. They're not recommended for organic chemistry labs like this because they will dissolve in an organic solvent. It's better in that case to use nitrile gloves, which are usually either blue or green. These ones do not stretch as much, but they are much more resistant to organic chemical solvents and to slightly corrosive aqueous ones. So these are the ones we recommend that you use in the second year laboratory. You could also use just good old reliable dishwashing gloves that you can get from your local supermarket. Now, these are in fact more resistant and so you can use these multiple times. However, they're not quite as flexible. When they start to smell, that is, once they have started to absorb some chemicals, then it's time to discard them. They'll last probably about one term in this lab. For more vicious chemical situations, there may be heavier gloves. This is quite resistant, but it's going to be difficult to manipulate them. We've also got really heavy ones but it's rather hard to use 
um, my hands and my fingers with this particular glove. If you need something more chemically resistant than the nitrile gloves, we will provide that for you. Don't forget that gloves can get contaminated. Take them off before you leave the lab or before you touch a computer keyboard. The, when you're discarding gloves, grab the cuff and turn the glove inside out. And that way the nasties are inside and you should discard them in the paper garbage.